Hello everybody, this is Phil and I'm doing a video right now on quick loadouts. Um, and when I say quick loadouts, people use that term of preparing yourself with a package of some sort in a bag. It might be your bug out bag. It might be what you're going to put on your body to defend yourself, your armor or your weapon of choice. Um, loadout uh, basically denotes um, the load of uh, equipment you're going to be using, especially magazines that are extra if you're going to battle. How much? How big is your loadout? And I'm not referring to that with all that terminology bullshit. I'm not uh, talking about that and determining that by weapons and ammunition at this time. Okay. When... I prep, I don't know everything there is to know about prepping, but I know what I can wear at work. And I know what is needed at work should I feel the need to arm myself, okay? My weapon of choice for everyday carry is a simple PT-3AT. I've done videos on this before and you know, I'm so busy at work sometimes. I forget everything there is to know about guns at times. Six plus one in the chamber. Seven rounds of 380 for defensive measures. Okay, please excuse me while I adjust the phone. I'm a simple person. I use my phone for a lot of things. And I don't feel a need to do projects like big videos with a GoPro with an actual camera. There are some cameras from the past you can still use and upload it into the online streaming. And I'm busy at work earning money that way. So I'm not focused on that incidental stuff. I'm not trying to prove anything different. As I have said before many times, most of my videos are to help other people also but to be a running legacy for my children who are young and they're, they're coming into their own now in their teen, early teen years. And some of my children are much younger, okay, seven and eight. And so uh, I do videos at times when I think there's something interesting I like to expound upon. When people talk about loadout. Is it just guns and ammo? Is it the magazines? How many magazines? Well, if you have a truck gun and it's battle ready, you need no less or no, you can't have any less than 10 30 round magazines of AR-15, uh, AR 223 or 5.56. Five, you just can't. Unless you have a handgun uh, like a 5.7 and you have multiple magazines of 20, um, of 20 basically, and you have about 15 of those magazines, that's a very fast round that can do a lot of damage within, I want to say, close quarters and out to a football field. Let's face it, it's a fast round. Okay, the 28 by 5.7, uh, 5 whatever the nomenclature is. And they have more and more handguns that have the longer barrels, and that little round can extend out because of its high-velocity cartridge. Okay, all the amount of powder in it. Regardless of what it is, it's high velocity uh, powder and quick burning and smokeless, most of it. Um, in any event, when I refer to a loadout, I'm referring to being prepared, especially in the workplace. With me working in group home settings, I cannot display weapons and I cannot carry weapons most times. My new current job has not said anything about that, but people who have known me for the last seven years working for the community service board and that tarantula monster that killed a lot of my friends in the last year or two, um, know that uh, they were very stringent about not having weapons and not offending anybody and especially not threatening anybody. And that's not my intention in the workplace when I'm there to help people, my clients or consumers or patients or people uh, that have disabilities that I am there entrusted to help. However, it is a field that needs 
knives. It is a field that needs gloves. It is a field that needs glasses sometimes, uh, so reader glasses, so you can see the medication you're giving to seven or eight clients a night. You always need to be prepared is what I'm saying, okay? So when I talk about a loadout, basically I'm thinking of what could I do to defend my clients also? Not draw attention, okay, from or to them and not be offensive to the public that is there also to work with us to help those same consumers, those same patients, those same people that are disabled. So I think of like carrying 22 Magnum, okay? My hand can conceal it. I've done a video on this before and it's little baby brother. I'm gonna try not to upset my, my phone. Little 22, okay? Two fingers can conceal this, okay? In this, I can shoot and I know how to plink with it, but I haven't practiced to use this self-defense quick, you know, uh, single action hammer pull, pull the trigger, which is hard with a big finger to come back and hit it. Okay, so I don't carry that often. I would usually carry the 22 Magnum as an everyday carry or my Caltech P3AT with the cool zombie coloring I got last year. Did videos on that, okay? So I'm not even really talking about handguns in general. I would like to carry these almost everywhere I go, and I can't say I do or I don't at work. But I can say I do have things I can use as weapons if I need to, and I'm being more tactical than practical, okay? But talking about a loadout in particular today, I'm talking about extra stuff I carry and how I set it up because I don't need common sense to tell me that when I'm on my feet all day, I don't want a lot of heavy stuff weighing me down and in my baggy cargo pants are swishing back and forth being annoying. Okay. Things I've talked about before. Nice box cutter from Harbor Freight. At this time, I forget, Manhattan Tools or whatever, uh, I got this from, sturdy, dropped it a few times, never broke, the emblem wore off, it was painted on, and basically you have a cutting knife for boxes when you're at that group home alone or you're at work alone and you have to unpack stuff. What are you going to do if you don't have a knife? So what did I do? I made sure it had a hole in there. I put the lanyard of 550 cord in there. Okay. I made it about that long with a carabiner. I attached the carabiner to my pants, to my uh, cargo shorts. People ask, well, why do you wear cargo shorts? I gained some weight in the last year. I make no bones about it. But even before when I was in much better shape, the heat, staying busy all day, would wear me out because I'm losing a lot of nutrients. So, your loadout needs to be efficient, okay? It, it needs to be something that is there to help you every day. And I have some extra things to show too with my loadout. Like, I'm a writer. So, I might want to see something on my phone and I might put a flash drive with my pack. My little pack that I put in my pants pocket. Anyways, this knife folds easily. It's very safe. People see me pull it out, and it's attached to my uh, land, uh, attached to my belt loop. I always wear a belt to hold everything together, um, very tight, and then I put everything in my cargo pockets. Very easy to access. This I cut open food packages every day. This I open up boxes every day. This I use to cut up stuff, cut up trash, make it smaller so I don't have to fill the trash up, okay, every five minutes with a bunch of junk that I just collected that I have to get rid of from the previous shifts. Very useful cutting down trash, okay? This thing, 
using anything as a freaking weapon, if you held it like this with a carabiner in your hand and wrapped once, and you wallop somebody over the head, this thing is heavy, and it's heavy enough to basically knock out anybody if I wanted to do that. Talking about talk the tactical edges, you know, tactical edge, everything you use in your arsenal to defend yourself and others. I was trained that way, and I see all these commercials with the Navy SEALs and throwing dirt in somebody's face, and it's like, yeah, okay, you're in a parking lot, what are you going to do then, you know? Pop him, pop him or her in the freaking uh, Adam's apple or the throat right there. Yeah, that's common sense stuff. But I applied it to my everyday job when I was a police officer way before these instructional videos started coming out. And the, um, I want to say, duly experienced uh, ex-military that are coming out now, they might have been in there 30, 40 years. They were teaching this way before I came along, you know. Common sense, self-defense tactic, tactics. I forgot more about that than these guys probably ever trained. But I'm not here to fight them. I'm not in shape. I'm not here to talk smack about them. It's just not a new concept is what I'm saying. If it saves their lives, if it saves your lives, use it. And don't get sued if you hurt someone too bad. Simple thing I put in the same cargo pocket. Okay, let me just differentiate. My razor knife and my wallet goes in my back pocket. Hooked to a belt loop. <coughs> and I know exactly where my wallet is at every time. I know where this is. And I simply pull it out and it's hanging from my, my hip area and I use it. Okay. This in my cargo pocket, right hand side so I can get to it. Very simple. An extra pen. And my reader's glasses when I need to. And there's very, very tiny print. I'm not sure half this stuff with tiny print I could have read with regular eye 20 years ago when I was much younger. And so now I'm like, all right, just buy a pair of readers, try to protect them. If I'm laying down on it or, you know, I'm sitting down and getting up and down, try to protect them, keep the carrier. Basically, 20 bucks, if they're good, 20 bucks at CVS or uh, Walgreens or like a dollar and a quarter at Dollar Tree, if you can find these. Okay, very simple. In my right cargo uh, pants pocket. Then when I talk about loadout in particular, I'm talking about a kit that you can use to pull out. I don't have my tweezers because I haven't had a chance to buy a whole set of them again. Those tweezers can get you out of so much trouble when you're working with something and you need to pull something out of the sink. You need to pull something out of the garbage disposal while it's turned off, of course. No running water. And you know there's something down there. You need a set of tweezers. What I've been using for the last month, because I haven't stopped by Dollar Tree in a long time or a dollar store in general, is these tweezers that also cut. This can pull out splinters. This can pull out glass shards you have in your foot you can't really see, and this can cut out the extra skin around it, and then you pull it right out and you don't hurt anymore when you step on your feet, okay? This is more medical, if you want to say, but the tweezers are a great idea. These are not tweezers. These are things that actually cut, but they can be used as tweezers if you use them properly, okay? This, with a simple rubber band, I pull this out. This is a flash drive. Anything I write that I can put on my computer and transfer to this, I can take and put it on a laptop. And theoretically, if the laptop is hooked up to Wi-Fi, easily work on the same document. What I'm going to do is take the extra, uh, I want to say, um, snowballing document I had where I put in one entry 
and that's one date. And then I'll put in the next entry with more data on it and so on and so forth. What I'm going to do is clear all these out and put it on this when I finish my project. And I'm going to hand carry this to a publisher or my agent if I ever get one. Okay, a real agent per se or my buddy's uh, dad who was like my second dad. He wants to represent me and he likes he can he can read my book on this. I carry this around like that everywhere. Okay. I pulled out everything out of my my, my uh, pocket and this just came undone when I pulled it out because I was getting in and out of the car a lot this morning. So you ever find that you need a rubber band and you're like, dang, why did I throw away that twisty? Why did I throw away that rubber band? Why did I throw away that, that hair scrunchie that might have been useful, tactically speaking? Okay. You have extra rubber bands. When I am doing medications and I'm pulling out all the meds together in these big sheets, so they come together in from the pharmacy in these. I just keep on putting them on my, my wrist as I go along so I can file through the medication sheets and uh, basically scan them as I'm handing out the medication all in one bunch. And these start collecting. So I started collecting these. Okay, instead of throwing them away. I'm not going to put them back or take time to put them back around all these sheets for like seven or eight meds. But I found purpose for these tying things together. Okay. That can hold everything together with your little loadout pack. Okay. Then shoelaces. Laces you don't need for uh, brand new shoes. I happen to buy a pair of shoes, tennis shoes that work really good for my feet. And I didn't need the shoelaces because it was supposed to be supportive of the upper arch without straining it too much or pinching it too much, which then hurts the lower feet and causes plantar fasciitis in anybody. When the doctors say the lower part of your feet hurt really bad, that's because of the upper top of your feet, the arches going down, all that bone, believe them. Once you straighten out that upper arch and you work that really well so you're, you're walking properly, no more plantar fasciitis, your feet heal. So, I have two shoelaces. What can you use this? Or you can use 550 cord, about this much worth, like two shoelaces. You can use one for a tourniquet and the other one for a tourniquet if you have multiple casualties. Okay, I finally wanted to do that without pulling out a pack of something. I have to keep on raveling up. Okay, if you know how to do a tourniquet, you wrap it around the leg, you can twist and then tie a knot. Okay, you can put, you put another, I want to say a stick or something long and a harder. On top of it, you tie another knot on top of that and you just twist everything. So basically, theoretically, it's getting tighter and tighter with the knot itself getting tighter and tighter. Okay. Then you, you take that stick and you have the balled up stuff and the stick is going through and you put that stick right in the outskirts of the wrap. Okay. So it, it doesn't move. When someone who is a trained EMT or medic or doctor or nurse comes up, maybe a DSP too, like I am. They'll see that, they'll, they'll assess the situation. They'll see that stick going through your knot and it's hooked under your wrap, okay? And it's stationary and they'll be like, oh damn, and all the blood is south of that, okay? The injury is south of that. They'll know exactly what to do then and how to tell the, the doctor what transpired, okay? If you can, I don't recommend using in, in everyday life using their their own blood to mark on their forehead a T for tourniquet. Okay, that means all the clothing they have on when they disrobe them in the ER and they're getting the proper medical attention right there and then because they didn't bleed out on your scene because you were smart enough to have a tourniquet. 
okay? Something you could use real quick for that small leg, that small arm. Uh, maybe, a, maybe tie this together in a big leg. You know, use the, the two sh shoelaces, tie them together, do basically uh, a slip knot, and pull tight on both sides of the line, and you have a larger tourniquet for big arms and big legs. But anyways, when they see that stick going across that person's leg or arm, and hopefully the person is conscious enough to partake in their own care when they're going to the ER, they can say, yeah, the tourniquet hurts, the tourniquet hurts. Well, you were about to bleed out, dude. I hope you know that, you know, Phil and his buddies that are well-trained took care of you. You didn't bleed out, and now we have to suture up those veins and arteries that were damaged in whatever accident that person got into. So, always have two strong shoelaces you can use. These are not going to tear unless they wear down after wash, after wash, after wash, or there are a bunch of old tennis shoes. I'm not saying get these from old tennis shoes. I'm talking about new shoelaces that will last a couple years. Okay? Then you open up this. This is a toenail. How many people were at work and they had to stay over a double shift? They were sitting there and they're like, okay, I, I got downtime. I can take a nap now. They rub their feet. They're tired. And they're like, dang, I've been working 90 hours a week for the last three months. I should cut my toenails. That's part of hygiene. The more toenail you have, the more fungus you're going to build up, especially with the heat and moisture your feet generate on their on your feet, so to speak, moving all day long. Okay, it doesn't have to be necessarily wet from outside on a rainy day or a cold snow day. That's even worse. Okay, if you don't care for your feet, but you might just want to simply. Cut your toenails and then this little knife okay I'm not into cosmo uh, cosmetology this is a little knife you can use for other little things scraping something maybe you have to scrape extra uh, dry skin off of your feet I think that's what it's for it looks like a bottle cap op opener too one piece coming out and it fits in this kit more recently, my, I care for my feet a lot because I don't have to care for my feet a lot, okay? I'm busy and I wash myself as best as possible. But if you have dry skin starting with fungus, this could be used for your fingernail. It's a file. It could be used for your, your toenails. Dry it off as best you can without losing the edge, just like sandpaper both sides, and you can file off that dry skin on your feet especially. I get calluses sometimes right here from typing all day and doing input notes and goals. And so it's like I can use this basically on my free time when I use a lot of good lotion. Okay, before I do that, instead of peeling it off and cracking the skin where it hurts, and it causes an open wound, so to speak, and it's more painful, you can wear down the dry skin, just like that. Then, when you wash your hands, you can afterwards use lotion, and it feels smooth, and it doesn't hurt as much. It's not going to crack as bad. The, the goal is to always lotion up your hands the best as possible, lotion up the dry parts of your skin, Contrary to popular belief, that is better than any worries about fungus or mold growing on your body. You got to get rid of those harder dead skin layers, then use lotion that will help heal your skin and stop the itchiness, the flakiness, okay? The jock itch of the world, the athlete's foot, feet of the world, okay? You want to clean that and make it uh, unhospitable for that fungus to grow, but then you have to use lotion so when it when it does heal itself and it's drying out, it doesn't itch really bad at those edges 
of that perforated skin, that little dry skin patches and everything. This helps minimize that. Now, this part of the toenail thing, I know, I suspect, is to go underneath your nail and get all the nasty stuff out. But you can use something like this. It's like a spear. It's pointed, okay, but it's not that sharp. You can use this for other things that might come up. I don't know, but I suspect this is for cleaning out underneath the toenails, which you also want to do when you're taking care of your feet. Make sure that nothing collects in there and becomes fungal, becomes dried skin that, that is known to attract all kinds of nasty parasites or something that will come on there and start wanting to eat that dead skin. Okay, and it grows like a fungus. Okay, a fungus might grow on uh, dead material underneath your nails. I don't have to be a well-trained DSP like I am to know these things. And I did do a certain amount of foot care, um, not being a doctor, but on the previous job at the, uh, at the group home during COVID when no doctors would see anybody for half a year. Okay, so we had to cut toenails. Usually the lady DSPs had a better rapport with people that would slap, would have impulsive outbursts. And so they, they did actually my supervisor, God bless her heart, some of the good things she did do is she would say, sit down, sir. You know what time it is. And he's like, yay. All, all my clients would be like, yay. They love my supervisor because she was female and she was like a motherly figure. And she would just sit there and clip toenails and all the stuff would fall on the ground. And she's like, you know, you need to stop pooping because I see some fungus growing on your, in between your toes. And when you poop all over the place and you take, you can take a shower, you know, whoever it might be of the client, you get a lot of feces down by your feet. So you're not cleaning as well. Oh, okay. And then we double check hearing that, you know, cause we're smart. Okay. Common sense would tell you. When you're doing a shower routine with your clients, make sure that they're rinsed off all the way. Make sure their feet are, are, are thoroughly rinsed off with hot water that makes it very uninhabitable for fungus to grow. And we'd have to make sure that their feet were washed somewhat. So all that dirtiness, all that feces from their back end going down wouldn't collect on their feet and start fungal infections. Common sense stuff. So this I've had for years and a zipper uh, is hard to pull all the way around. I use this enough where I, I'm okay with just leaving it lying around. And I'm like, no, my loadout is needed to make this a better, a better system because the new job I'm at has higher functioning behavioral health people where all this stuff is needed quickly. And when people like, Oh, well, check in the med box to see if you can help him with this. Okay. Is it on his uh, medical record so we're allowed to help apply something like a cream or something? And then you're like, okay, we can't go to the doctor because everything's shut down. How do we care for their feet? Put on the gloves and do what we, we would do to our own feet. You know, yes, you want to sanitize this. You can use hand sanitizer to clean any of this when you're done with it. Simple stuff like that goes a long way. Okay. So I'm going to put the um, shoelaces together. I made these, uh, these were blue for my tennis shoes and I'm like blue. Okay. With this, it stands out and that tourniquet reason blue. Someone would see this with most clothing and say, that's neon blue. What is that doing there around the guy's leg? What if I didn't have a chance to take the guy's own blood and he was conscious and I didn't want to mark it with a T here for tourniquet? Okay. So what do I do? I simply put the ends in here like that, like a pancake eating the shoelace. Okay. Put my finger in the middle there so I can start. I hook it like that. These are just simple things you can do. 
And then I want to try to see if I can tuck it back in because this isn't the end all be all to hold everything in. At the end there, one end has the tighter part in there. I'm gonna, the leftover I'm gonna keep on tucking in to the other side. Okay, so at any moment I can grab this and unravel it. Okay, just like that. So then with the uh, extra rubber bands, I undo them so they're not knotted. Four little tiny rubber bands, they might break over time. I'm not claiming they're gonna be there forever to use, but you never know when you need rubber bands to connect stuff together, okay? And I'm not gonna go through rubber bands for a whole month's worth of medication. Eight medication sheets, and each sheet has 31 days or whatever, but 28 days are for exactly four weeks. I'm not gonna keep on putting rubber bands on them. So the new med uh, batch comes in, I'm taking these off, putting it right on my wrist, and I'm using them. I'm gonna make some use out of them somehow, okay? Then, can you get, a, get away just holding it like that so it keeps everything in? Or do you want to put it around long or width-wise also and double wrap it so it keeps everything tight? Okay, go like that, twist, back over it. Doesn't matter how it is, you'll be able to get that undone very easily. Okay, then with these cutters, clippers, they're more medical for cutting bandages, I want to say. Just tuck it in. So it's in there nice and sturdy. Just like that. Then this, this is extra because I'm a writer and I might want to write some extra in my book while I'm at work and there's some downtime. I tuck it under everything else. It's not bothering anything. It's under nice and securely. Like that. I want to pull it out some. So it's nice and secure. Like that. This I can go to any second. I, I see the need of it. There's little things mean a lot when you're busy and you're making money. Especially when you're helping people. These things, you pull these out and, and the higher ups above your supervisor are there doing paperwork in the same house. You're giving support. They see you pull this out. They're not threatened by it. Cutting open boxes, okay, or cutting up food products because you're about to make breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They see you pull this out, okay. This might be something you want to plug in in the uh, work computer and look at stuff you, you've written. But you pull that out, and they're like, wow, that goes through your phone too? Yep, I can type on my phone with this. In my phone. And the upper bar shows me. Shows me this. And I basically hit, hit it from the upper bar dropping down, and I can start doing whatever I want through um, one of their writer programs or basically everything that assimilates the same data information and I can work at it. And they're like, wow, you're prepared. It's like, yeah, what are those shoelaces for, Phil? Tourniquet? Oh, okay. It's like, do you know how to apply a tourniquet? Uh, well, we studied that, uh, you know, a year ago or two years ago when I started working for the company. You know, it was just something we could do. It's like, yeah, and if you have a, a stick or a, a long item, maybe a very strong pen, that's what you tie it up around, okay? And then you twist, and you twist, and you twist, and you twist. Then you tuck that uh, large stick or that large item underneath, back underneath the, the tourniquet itself, and a person does not bleed out to death, okay? They're not going to bleed out because of this. This is non-threatening. Okay, and I am not going to cut anybody in their femoral artery or in their necks. That is not the purpose. The purpose is 
to cut down things or open up things. Okay, some things, a lot of things you have to cut down just to put in trash bags nowadays. You know, we are the online um, generation where we order things online and they all come in boxes. And there, there's a lot of wrap we have to cut out also too with a, a razor knife. And it's like, you have this on your person all the time. And this, last but not least, they're going to say, wow, okay, that, Phil, they're not going to say white supremacist. They're not going to say crazy survivalistful. They're going to say he cares about his job because he wants to make sure he can help the consumers, the clients, the patients, the disabled when something arises, especially giving out medication. Okay. Now, part of the loadout, let's go side by side, is... Two packs, two dosages of basically Pepto-Bismol capsule form, generic stuff that's not actually Pepto-Bismol. This stuff works and doesn't cause a lot of issues long-term for the stomach if you use it once every other day. Once, I want to say three times a week because you're drinking coffee. I don't use this all the time. I don't. I don't like any pills. I've said that since 2011 in my surgeries. Okay, but for a PRN, I use these. I might use one one day because I feel it building up and I ate something that had a little too much spice in it. Wasn't super hot, but it was a weird spice that everybody gets in the back of their throat and they could feel the tension building up, okay, because of the acid buildup. So I take one of these, close the pack back up. You have three, okay? It's really bad and you want... You want it as a PRN sooner than later, and everything you want to throw at it, you take two, okay? With the Peptol, Pepto-Bismol acid reducers, they work on a lot of symptoms, okay? Um, the diarrhea, like the commercial says, and everything, everything else. And the generic stuff is just as good, okay? Don't believe anything. Get the generic stuff if you can, especially when it's pink. It might be liquid form. Okay, I got the pills so I can carry them around, the capsules, okay? They're basically like this inside my pocket, rub it against my, my uh, shorts, the inner sh shorts pocket, and it doesn't bother me. It's not going around crazy, okay? And it's in my cargo pants pocket, very simple to use, okay? So all of these are together just like this, just like this. And it's stuff I need every day to survive in a home health care situation or work environment. Okay, especially uh, doling out medication left and right. You might get pills and pill bottles you have to open up. But you don't want to worry about tearing up everything because of all the paper that's extra. And you got to stick it off to the side while you're administering just take this, cut around the edges, open it up. Okay. Very simple things like that. I would like to say from Tamu, I received um, a spoon, knife, and fork kit. I would love to enter it in. I don't have one handy, but this tore up very cheaply sewed right here. And right here on the bottom, just started tearing. I can actually go like this and, and pull it another couple of strings, but it tore already. I'm like, man, it's a great idea in the, the actual uh, spoon, fork, and knife set. The knife comes out like all other knives. Very sharp, too. But I'm not going to do a review on it other than to say, be careful, those little knife kits. Because they can get addictive to buy. You see one and you just want to get a bunch of them. I think like buying things for my children 20 years from now, no economy, no manufacturing. Uh, oh my God, you have anything metal made, they're going to ban. Okay. You know, in this climate, anything not green, they're going to ban. Meanwhile, the people that are making all these rules are the ones that are getting paid millions and millions of dollars because of stock options they have like Al Gore or what have you, they're profiteering off of 
you only going electric and not going uh, gas, fuel, oil, diesel. Everything is ran on oil. And that's what people don't think. You know, there's like, how do you think those batteries are made for those Teslas? Okay. How do you think the energy goes through one location where you can receive the energy? Where did that energy come from? A power plant 10 miles away. Are you that ignorant that you're going to issue in communism to oppress humans the rest of our lives because in generations to come, just because you think virtue signaling about acting like the planet is it doomed. Do your research and you find out that's all false. The, the earth will crumble on its own weight and it will rebuild on its own weight. Humans have nothing to do with it. They've proven that. Okay. The Bill Gates of the world doing the uh, aluminum barium oxide drops out of the airplanes and the jet engines. That is doing more to damage our earth because of the soil degradation. Research and you'll find it out yourself. So, in essence, it's nice to have one of these. Always, if you have nothing else, one of these 22 magnets will save your bacon. And I'm not talking about a big street gunfight. I'm not talking about necessarily taking down ISIS or someone in a bad terrorist attack. But this could be just enough to get out of Dodge and save your people. Okay. Five shot, 22 Magnum. It's a formidable round, trust me. Or seven rounds of 380. Okay. I love this. I carry this almost every day I, I possibly can. Do I carry it into work? I'm not going to discuss that. Usually don't. Usually don't have a reason to. There's always a first time, I understand that, but it's close by, close by, ready to go. Get me to my vehicle where the truck guns are, okay? Then I can address a formidable fighting force that was trained. I don't care if you're Army, don't care if you're Navy SEALs, okay? I really don't care if you're a threat and I see you as a threat. I'm not the only one that, uh, I understand, I was not the only one trained to take out threats. Close combat or far, far combat. But if you need the firepower to carry around with you, it's just to get to a better, bigger weapon or get out of Dodge and be safe. That's my loadout. Okay? Anyways, guys, thank you. There are some other things you might want to attach. Do something like this. Okay, you might want to put gloves and wrap it around. Uh, there's those little nitrile blue gloves. The field I'm working in now, they don't believe in nitrile gloves because it costs them too much money. Okay, they believe in that those plastic gloves, uh, vinyl gloves, and I can't stand it. I can't stand it because I put them on, and as soon as I move a certain way to adjust them so they fit more comfortably and I can feel more texture at my fingertips, it tears. I told them I am not wearing these gloves ever again. I will clean my hands when I'm administering medication and supports, but I will not use these vinyl gloves because they are substandard. They are substandard for hands that are extra large, okay? I like the nitrile blue ones because the large ones fit nice over your hands and you have texture where you can feel what you're working with, even small pills. Oh, okay, Phil, I, I see. But we're still not getting the nitrile because we're under budget or we're over budget and we don't have enough money. We're under where we can't buy those little other things that are industry standard professional and work constantly. They work. They're proven to work. Blue nitrile gloves, like the surgical gloves, you put on and you pull them down to here, work every time on my big hands. So it's like, why can't we do that for everybody? Larges fit small hands. Larges fit extra large hands. Okay? Those vinyl gloves do not. And when they tear, okay, we just infected ourselves with whatever's going around. Okay? Put on the blue gloves the first time, you can't really say that. Okay, it's more safety and security for you. Okay, and you're not spreading stuff after you wash your hands. Put on the gloves, administer whatever you're going to administer. 
anyways, just a quick video, 45 minutes, uh, talking about a loadout and what it can really mean to you. Do you need a pocket knife? Yeah. Okay. This is proof you don't need a pocket knife. But something to cut, like a pocket knife, like a, um, whatever the, the, they call them, the buck knives, okay, that open up one blade. Okay, does that help you out cutting things? Sure, okay. But it has one use, cutting things, okay? You need to think about everything to be prepared. And that's all I pretty much have to say on, on the matter. I'm not a, a go-to guy for everything tactical and practical, but I'm not a tactical fool or tactical fool. Whatever. I can't stand them type. I also can't stand types that have been there and they have had a career on these systems and then they would try to profiteer off it like it's something new. I, I, bad taste in my mouth with my tobacco. Anyways, thank you guys. Please have a great day. Protect yourself, protect your community, protect your God, your own state, wherever you may live, in your God great United States. They're worth protecting. Take care.